Good evening and welcome to another episode of Law and Order. As you all know, this is a program where we discuss the current legal environment and issues related to the law and giving you advisors, uh, the advisors that you need to survive in this legal environment. And today we're going to deal with one of the most important and timely important topics. It's banking and we have a well-deserved person to discuss about banking. He is the chief legal advisor and head of legal recovery of a leading private bank and is none other than attorney at law, Mr. Tusita Edirabira. Good evening to you, sir. Good evening, Charita. And it's nice to have you with us yes, with this program. Yes. Right. Okay. So, simply, we are onto banking and we have many issues for the moment because we are dealing with a, an economic crisis and even like the economic status is not that much stable. So within that background, so banks have come to a certain turning point where in certain savings, fixed deposits, loans and everything. So simply, let's have an approach to this uh, topic. What is banking? Yes, that's a very good question, Charita, because uh, as a citizen of the country that we must know, basically, when you are into business, especially what a bank is, the bank will always help for the economic development of a country because people have utmost trust and a reliability on the bank and from a bank's point of view banks deal with public funds so in order to regulate the banking sector the banking act was introduced in 1988 what is called banking act number 30 of 1988 so in that act section 30 defines what is banking business is. So just for the information of the public, I would like to explain like a quote from the act itself. Yes, certainly. What the definition given, the legal definition given, what you mean by banking business. <coughs> uh, the act says, the banking, the, I'm referring to the banking act number 30 of 1988 which says banking business means of receiving funds from the public through the acceptance of money deposits payable upon demand by check draft order or otherwise and the use of such funds either in whole or in part for advances investments or any other operation either authorized by law or by customary banking practices. So this definition is a very wide definition when it comes to banking business. Right. So when uh, moving with that definition, so we can just expose a little bit about what are the services that a bank grants to a customer? Yes. If you take it, the banks provide different, different services to the people of a country. That is maybe if you take it, for the upper class they provide, if first what they provide is accepting deposits where people can invest their money and as a return they could get an interest on that. That is the earning that is of the people who are into business. But from the other point of view if you take it, if you take certain people who are retired, now for them also of their retirement benefits if you are in the private sector, what you do is you go and invest in a bank and you live on the interest of what you get it. So of what they get as deposits from one side, right? how the bank invests that those is by lending. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to lending. Yes, we can talk about that also. Yes, sir, right. When it comes to lending, it's very important. Right? What are the requirements of the people? of their customers. Yeah. So simply sir, like moving on with that topic, uh, normally when it comes to the ordinary practice, so we use uh, banks to deposit our money. That means rather savings or fixed deposits or we deposit there for safety, security or rather uh, with an ambition of earning a small interest. So apart from that, when, uh, when you talk about that lending portion, uh, people like tend to say like it's very difficult to obtain a loan from the bank. So there might be certain legal requirements and certain things to fulfill. So we can move on in that area as well. Yes, Charita, because a bank will always have to follow the guidelines of the central bank. And as I told you, the banks have banks are regulated by the Banking Act 
and by the rules imposed by the central bank. If you, I may quote a few, there are section 9, 18, sorry, section 19, 20 and 21 mm -hmm. of the Banking Act especially says about the capital requirement, mm -hmm. the reserve fund, the liquidity base a bank must maintain. Not like any other limited liability company. Why? Mm -hmm. Because bank deal with public funds. At mm -hmm. any moment, the bank must return the depositors deposit as and when they request and mm -hmm. on maturity. So that is very important. important. So because of that, when the banks do lending, because since they lend, the monies that they have received as deposits, they have to be extremely careful. They have to safeguard the interest of the depositors. At the same time, they have to ensure of what they lend that they can take it back. So we have to prepare this forum for that, stage for that, stage for that. in advance. Right. We can't just haphazardly, ad hocly give money for people and then later on think how are we going to recover it. We have to pre-plan this and do all that. So that is the reason where from a person or customer's point of view, they think it's a difficult process, but no, not at all compared to other institutions or financial institutions, mm -hmm. banks are very flexible. They know the requirements of the people. And they are, they are true, they are business minded, profit making is their main aim. But at the same time, on top of all that, their idea is to help people to come up in life. Right, so like without like being a lending institution, they can't lend money legally. So bank has that power to lend money to people, but they adhere to certain uh, requirements when it comes to public money. It's like if it, it becomes a certain misuse if they don't adhere. So what are those requirements in advance like that the bank accept and the bank like uh, they require from the customers? Right. Basically, uh, what we know is in a bank, when customer comes asking for borrowings, they have to apply these principles of what is called three C's. Mm -hmm. Character, capacity and collateral. Right. That is the first principle. First principle. Right. It, it goes beyond that five C's, seven C's, nine C's. But I don't want to go into that detail. Mm -hmm. But the simple principle is three C's. So right. what is character? The willing, willingness of the person to pay. Mm -hmm. capacity. capacity. The ability of the person to pay. And what is collateral? The security for what you lend and advance, whether you could get it back. Right. Right? We all know, right? If you part with something what is in your possession or custody, till you get that back, you are at a risk. You are at a risk. But the moment you give something to another person, till you recover it, you are at a risk. So the banks also face the same situation. situation. So banks have to see, is this person really want the funds? Or is he just coming because the banks are giving? Right. Will he really invest those funds in the proper way or in the objective what he wants? Right. And whether he will get a return back to serve the loan. So when I say serve the loan, it should be the capital as well as the interest. interest. So they are the profit of the bank or the earning of the bank is the interest that they charge or recover from the borrower upon lending. Then they see of the collateral. If the, the borrower comes into a situation where he is unable to pay, what is your next step? What is your next plan? How are you going to recover? Then you fall back to the security. Mm -hmm. right? So security, it could be a property or it could be a movable and immovable properties or it could be otherwise maybe personal guarantees, demand promissory notes and mm -hmm. things like that. So all those comes under security. Security. So like adhering to those three Z's and in advance, like we can just go in deeply as five, seven and more on. Like uh, bank, they do adhere to those circumstances. And if they are okay, they are willing to lend the money. Yes, they are always willing to lend their money to, for, to, for the, to help the people. Help the people. And that is their main business. That mm -hmm. is their core business. And in other words, if you say that is their bread and butter. Lending right. is their bread, and, bread butter, and butter, mainly. Mainly. So and all that. And that is why banks they have a overall target to the organization. Mm -hmm. Then down the line they they divide it 
if they have regional offices, if they have branches, if they have departments, they divide and give these targets for relevant officers to collect, to, to disperse within that particular year. So, when you disperse it within the particular year, you must have a proper plan. How are you going to recover it? Because if you are unable to recover from that side, the capital and the interest is your earning that you will not be able to serve uh, your depositors. How are you going to pay their interest? So, you have to be careful. So, the moment the bank is satisfied with the customer and that is why you have in today's context KYC rules, mm -hmm. know your customer, there is a form for that to identify the customer, customer and the bank is very particular to see who introduced that customer and they always insist or sometimes they go on the basis better another existing customer introduces another customer rather than a completely outsider coming. Right. I would say completely outsiders also come and they open account and they start. start. So, but that is why they have these KYC rules and all these things know your customer practices and rules so right. that to ensure the security of what they lend. Right. So, a small thing uh, apart from that, sir, like uh, when it comes to obtaining loans from uh, recognized banks, rather the lending institutions as we discussed. Uh, so, normally people say like if we have a savings account or fixed deposit or any connection with that particular bank, it is very convenient to obtain a loan. So, that is their surety, uh, security. Yes. yes, that is very uh, easy for the bank to identify their customer. customer. They know the customer's behavior then. They know the customer's practices then. They know the customer's income then. Mm -hmm. right? So, all that rather than just a completely outsider coming. Right. Right? They, are, they are aware of their customer. So, that is the general practice they have. First, they say you come as account holder. Right. You come as a depositor. 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 So, these are, I'm just telling you the generally the practice of private banks. Mm -hmm. So, once you are familiar with the bank for a few years, then throughout your career, you can be with the bank. So, if you come as a young person to a bank as a customer or account holder or a depositor, mm -hmm. the bank will certainly help you. To, to, right. They will give you loans for your education, they will give you loans to put up a house, right. they will give you loans to start a business, business, they will give you loans when it comes to your marriage, right. then they will give you loans uh, for, um, uh, to, for improvement of your this, for vehicles, right. leasing facilities higher purchase, right. all that they will give. Yes. So, it so could be a package actually. Package actually. So, like when it comes to this discussion, so the, that is the next point that I wanted to emphasize like uh, as a lending institution, a bank, there might be certain categories of loans rather like if I am an entrepreneur, I need to put up a business or develop my business. So, if I am learning, if I am gaining education, I need to invest on a degree program. So, likewise, what are the categories of loans that the banks have? Yes mainly for customers right uh, if you, there is two two types of facilities mm -hmm. called one is commercial loans right. others are personal loans right so when it comes to commercial loans if you are an entrepreneur or if you want to start a business or if you want to increase your business or if you need uh, uh, capital as in uh, for inf infusion of capital and th for improvement of your business mm -hmm. so all that you can go for a commercial loan the interest rate may be little high compared to the other types of facilities, right? But mm -hmm. the flexibility is there are more because the bank has assurance. Because how do you pay your installment and the interest? From the return you get on your investment for your business. Right. So then they are they will not go for heavy security mm -hmm. or serious security. Sometimes they might say light if, if you say lighter security, say demand promissory note maybe two personal guarantors and things like that or maybe stocks or any mobile assets mm -hmm. and things like that. Then the other types of loans they have is basically mm -hmm. personal loans. Mm -hmm. Now the first thing what you mentioned was for education. Right. So you say if you want to do postgraduate studies and things like that, what you can do is you can obtain a loan. Right. Basically, I know most of the private banks from you have a cost for your education for that degree or masters or whatever, whatever it is. From that about 80 to 90 percent they give they can uh, finance as a loan and give it to you. Mm -hmm. right? But the only issue there is you are not paying from that return. Right? Say maybe you want to buy a computer sometime they may give you a loan. Those are called personal loans, mm -hmm. higher education and things like that, traveling and things like that. 
So, but you don't pay from that return. There is no return on that. Return on so, that. then the bank has to be a little bit cautious, right. aware of the fact and see what are the what is the security they go, going to obtain. They might take the same security of what I told you earlier. Right. But beyond that, they may sometimes go on imposing or telling the borrower, why don't you give a property belonging to you? Right. Maybe your own property. Mm -hmm. And the banks are very much more flexible. They can even go for a third party property. Mm -hmm. What is third party property? If the borrower wants, uh, borrower does not own a property, mm -hmm. he can mortgage his father's property or mother's property or brother's property or spouse's property or friend's property. Right? And take a loan. And that will be the security. Right. So, to that extent you can go. Then under personal loans you get the housing loan. Right now, banks does a lot big service to the public, to the economy by trying to provide shelter for people, either maybe to purchase lands or for construction of houses. houses. And uh, that is so, so. In that context, basically, what is important there is even under the legal principles, you have to mortgage that specific land you are going to purchase. Or if you have the land and if you are going to construct the house, the existing land you have. Right? So they go beyond that and help people, especially in the Colombo and suburbs, to purchase apartments. And it has come to situations, still the apartment has not come up. Not it's come in up. the ground level. It's ground level. Still at the soil level. So then they have alternative mechanisms for that. Now you can't mortgage, mortgage. that. If you are purchasing the 20th floor, floor, that will be somewhere up. Up. So, still it does not come up. come up. So, what is the alternative? But the bank does not want to uh, either throw the customer away or give it up. So, what they do is basically with reputed property developers, mm -hmm. they come into an agreement, what is called a tri-party agreement. agreement. The developer, the bank and the borrower, oh. they come into an agreement that upon construction by the developer, the developer gives an undertaking that he will uh, transfer or sell it to the customer and the customer gives an undertaking that the customer will mortgage to the bank. So, they go to that extent taking a bigger risk because you will always see if the project does not work out, what are you going to do? So, that sort of risk is also the bank is willing to take up still. Take up. So, those are another type of personal loans. Mm -hmm. So, then again on the commercial types, if you say entrepreneurs and all that, right. we have SME loans, microfinance, right, smaller ones and mm -hmm. things like that. So, those are very popular among private banks today because a lot of people come, it is very easy to take, within a very short period you can take all those facilities and they can start up their own businesses. businesses. And we, can, we have seen people flourishing in their businesses by taking those loans but properly investing and managing those loans. Yeah. That's the most important. Most important thing and we are ready to discuss on that matter as well. So simply as a lending institution, banks helps a lot for customers in a wide range of finance like even if you need to obtain education, if you need to obtain a like a degree in the even when it comes to entrepreneurship and even small and medium scale businesses and even apartments with regard to the new trends and there are wide aspects that a bank helps. So, when it comes to loans, another important thing that we can emphasize on today's session. So, we are going to move on to another session as well. So, with regard to this banking because this is a wide topic and we have a lot to discuss uh, in this topic. So, basically, can you just uh, comment a little bit on this interest rate of a loan? Yes, interest rates also depends mm -hmm. on the type of loans that you are going to obtain. As I told you, if you take a commercial loan, the interest rate may be compared to a personal loan a little bit high. Because oh. why? The return is high. Return is high. high. But if you go to a housing loan, go for a housing loan, the interest mm -hmm. rates are fairly low compared to other loans because the bank itself knows, as I told you earlier, the, cost, the borrower does not have a return on that other than he gets a solution for his accommodation and with that he can improve his economic condition and venture into other businesses. So, he has to always pay the housing loan by the income that he earns through other sources. 
right. other businesses. But in a commercial loan, you always pay the commercial loan from the income you earn by investing in that particular business. business. So therefore, the interest rate there is high and interest rate on uh, housing loans, even on personal loans, mm -hmm. education. education. That is, they purely go to assist assist uh, their customers. customers. Otherwise, sometimes people may not get opportunity even to do their high, higher education. education. They can sometimes, they can't, if, if you are a young person, sometimes you can't depending, depend on your parents because their economic condition is not up to the standard to deviate from their day-to-day -day work or expenditure and to uh, provide for one of their children on education a bigger amount. amount. So the bank is there for helping hand. Helping hand. Right. Although the interest rate changes, that is depending on the circumstances and situation where the customer expects and his requirement, but still the bank charges a reasonable interest rate and lend that money to the customer in order to fulfill his requirements. So like today we were discussing about banking and current uh, infrastructure with regard to this thing uh, with loans and how we can obtain loans the legal requirements and uh, even we came to discuss about the interest rate as well so in another episode we are going to have a continuation on this uh, banking area so can furthermore I, yes can sir? i also uh, add this part for the information of the public mm -hmm. when it comes to interest rate it's always the central bank being the apex body and the regulate, they monitor. monitor. So they can't go on any arbitrary interest rates. Mm -hmm. All the banks have to go in par with the central bank guidelines, there are regulations, and it has to be always reasonable. Reasonable. It has to be always reasonable right. and affordable to the borrower to pay the interest. Interest. So that is very important. Very otherwise, important. why I thought I will tell you this also, otherwise people think if it's a private bank, their rates are higher than a government bank. Mm -hmm. No, it's not like that. Now it's almost the diff the the, the Gap is very minimal, mm -hmm. very minimal and small. Small. So, the, as the apex body or as the regulator, central bank monitors all these. So, we, the banks will always have to apply the interest rate decided by the central bank. Central bank. Right. So, with that valuable fact addition to our discussion, we are going to wind up today's uh, discussion uh, with regard to banking. And thank you very much, sir, for joining with us, Attorney at Law, Mr. Tusita Edirvira, Chief uh, Legal Advisor and Head of Legal Recovery of a leading private bank. And thank you very much for joining with us with today's episode. And uh, do stay tuned with us and we are going to have another episode on this banking as well. Until we'll meet next time, stay safe. It's a good night to you.